Hello, I am the host. Yes, normally I automatically become the host, but you joined before me. So it didn't work. I don't understand WebEx. It's just weird. Hi. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think it might be because I'm logged in this time to WebEx. I don't know. In general, if you log into WebEx, it breaks. <laughs> don't log into WebEx. Yeah. Dep and depending yeah. on which version you're using, if you want to turn your camera off, you should push the button so it goes red or don't push the button so it goes blue. I never push the camera button, so that's easy. <laughs> well, it's a real it's a real UI yeah. problem, right? I mean, right now it says to me it has a microphone icon with a slash through it. So does that mean my microphone is muted or does that mean I should push the button to make it muted? And it's totally easy. If it's dark, it's on. And if you push it, it becomes red and then it's off. What? Right. But what should the icon <laughs> say when it's pushed or not pushed? Right? Should the icon say what will happen if you push it or what the current state is? It should have a 3D indent. And then you're like, like, a, like, a, you should know it should mark yeah. it as down or up. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly. So because this on and off is not resembled in a intuitive way. I think that is the yeah. uh, missing uh, agile thing here. Hello, Andrew. Haven't seen you in a little while, I think. A couple weeks. Yeah, I come on and off. <laughs> you do. You do. A lot, my, uh, two weeks ago or a week uh, 30th is the last time it says, I saw you. That's my note said. Okay. Anyway, we have some obligation to keep track of who was in the design meetings for IPR rationality. If someone asks. Yeah, there was a there was a there was weren't working group where there was a big debacle um, because there was no attendance kept uh, on on the design team meetings and there was a lot of claims that certain things were ignored and anyway um, a number of papers were written about how the product the protocol as described couldn't work and quite a number of people said but but i have it running huh and so it was like I don't know. Like remote attestation, it works, but not really, you know, it not, this is not uh, satisfying your requirements, but it does things. <laughs> like create evidence of possibility. So everyone's really quiet, but that might be because I have on this WISIS thing this morning, and I think I turned my volume way down. Can you speak? Hello, hello. Okay, oh yeah, that was just my speaker was down. It was too early in the morning several hours ago and I turned my volume way down. <laughs> if, you, if you think I'm too, uh, too low of volume, that something is wrong oh, with your side. It's something wrong with me. Exactly. That was the clue. <laughs> that was the clue. Exactly. Okay. Um, let me see. I can share uh, application window. So Dave, I saw that you reviewed the uh, example three pull request that I made, and I think you'd asked to split that up. And so I just merged that, I think it was early this morning. Um, and then I rebased the other one that Hank and I had been working on, which was supposed to have that one removed, but because of the way Git does its stuff, it looked like it included it twice. Um, yeah, I was very confused. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, so it just it's because I, I I I when I when I split that up, I I rebased the one that you and I worked on on the other one because we also wanted it there, and so it looked like it included both, but it didn't actually include both. Um, does that make sense to you, Dave? What I'm saying. Um, I. Don't know whether it makes sense, but I hear that you merged it, so that's fine. Okay. <laughs> that you merged right. the one that added the yeah, thing back the, in. Yeah, uh, that, that, 
point was it looked like that that example was in both of them, but I didn't intend it. It was just that the two merge requests were piled on top of each other. Um, yeah, so I need to rebase 125. Yeah, I, I probably yeah. Um, so oh. you 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 suggested we remove this example, and yep. in uh, and I because I, we talked about last time anyway. We had a conversation. I said um, requires a citable reference on the addition of it, and so I think the cleanest thing to do is remove it and leave it in a separate branch, like in one twenty three or whatever, and then merge one twenty three once. There's a working group document or something that's a citable reference. That, that was my proposal. That shouldn't be new. I think we discussed that at the end of last time, but that's. Yeah, and, and I, I actually, I wasn't quite under, I didn't quite understand. Uh, so you, you felt that it needed to be a, an adopted working group document uh, to be a site to, to be reasonable in the example. I just wanted to make sure I understood that as your. Uh, that is my position, yeah. And. Um, I wondered if that was if that was shared among others. I, I'm not. I don't. I, mean, I, I think, don't know. I don't know that I understand your. The, the right rationale. now, there's so many different problems in the example, which is uh, that um, I thought it was easier to try to get out an internet draft before the deadline that does not include it, and then keep working on it as we have time. So, that, does that I, satisfy I, you, Hank? I mean, this was basically last times. Um, Consensus was uh, we have to do a submit. We need some something submittable. This is not submittable. This is, everybody agrees on that. So, um, so I think we are a good course forward is to have something before deadline on July 13th, and then we can maybe even resolve the blocker that is adoption by having a call for adoption or something, and then move on with this document if that is not a blocker for this document. Okay, so. So we're gonna so we're gonna merge 125. We're gonna leave 123 in the as a as a an open pull request. Correct. That, and, that's, that's my proposal. Yeah. And and then and then that lets us put up a document that has only cites uh, working group documents or other stable documents. And then Hank, I think you wanted you have a document which you said was the one that you think you wanted to cite, which is the reference. Um, interaction chara and so that needs to be on the agenda to be adoptable to be adopted is what i think you're telling i think yes yeah, so that, that. uh ready uh well on the preliminary item list so uh and so uh we can uh, talk about that uh live uh it has to be updated in any case uh, very soon uh, i think most of us are in our dda uh from uh University provided the input now, and now we can. Uh, I'm not. Uh, I, you're 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 you you're breaking up in a robotic fashion, which yeah, which suggests it's uh, packet loss. Yeah. Is this better? I don't know. I I don't I don't know. That's anything you're going to be able to do about it. it. Might not even be you. It might be at me. Is is everyone? Other people hearing Hank robotic? Yeah. yeah. I hear that. Okay. Yeah, me too. Uh, yeah, that's usually a jitter buffer on an outbound type thing, is my experience. Uh, I'm fine. But, so that's basically it. I'm fine. And and it goes it'll go away likely as something stabilizes in the network path as the jitter buffer figures out what your actual latency is. Um, okay. All right. So given that um, 23, we need to pull it, revert. Okay. That's where it was already. I just uh, rebased 125. Although the disk oh. look here just due to GitHub, but. Uh... <laughs> okay. That looks correct. Okay, so let's go back to the list yeah. of pull requests. And uh, well, at some point, so you, we'll need to rebase 123, which should now look like pure additions. Yeah, so I rebased it. I rebased it on the with the example we did already. Okay. Added. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and yeah, so this one will probably yeah when we rebase it, it'll probably it'll have again, a conflict yeah. that will 
we'll figure out. But uh, we're not going to worry about that because we're going to leave it in yep. the in the list for now. Okay. Um. So I had this one thirteen that I opened last week, um, and removed CC and RP. Need to remove it also from ten fifty seven. I think I just missed that. So uh, ten fifty seven. But we need to remove it from here. Yep. Maybe I didn't understand. So you just want me to remove the the word Correct. CC there. Yep. Okay. Yep. I understand. I understand. I didn't. I just. I. I thought you wanted the whole line to go. Nope. No. I just okay. trying to put the line back the way it was before. Okay. So basically, just like this. Yep. You got it. Cannot be applied. Uh -huh. all route. You add a suggestion to batch rather than add it single comment. So you need to review changes up top right and say comment. Uh, you have to do it to comment. I have I to have a comment. All right. All right. Uh, also remove <laughs> reference. Okay. So let's just now you have to commit suggestion. I can commit suggestion. I feel like it's an ECG <laughs> cardiogram thing that we're doing. Okay, so we remove that line. Yep. Okay, so that's good. All right, so yep, everyone's happy good. with that. We're gonna yep. gonna do that part. Result uh, conflicts. Oh, why is it conflict? But Maybe it conflicts with one of the things. Oh, it's this created. garbage at the bottom. Oh, interesting. Empty line in the bottom is, has, has infested some of the commits, I think. Okay, so that's another low-hanging fruit done. Okay, so uh, let's get quickly and see if we can get into. So, Thomas, I saw you asked uh, Kathleen email on the other one, but this is the, the one we didn't do. I will check with Cisco on this from Elliot, who isn't here with us today from Friday. <clears throat> and yeah, one, yeah. To, one to what? two. Kathleen said that she would. Uh look at it on monday but uh, but i haven't seen any any progress on that so i don't know yeah that was the other that was the other issue but this issue elliot said he would look at yeah yeah okay all right so at um, least um william's comment seems to agree with elliot's comment um where uh the i mean during the con during the meeting that we had last time which is that the New text is incorrect, and Elliot had suggested an alternate wording, but wanted to uh, rephrase it. And it sounds like um, Williams agrees with Elliot's. So we would like to review, uh, revert just this part. That's that 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 was Elliot's suggestion. You typed in there. One that looks to me like, if you look at uh, William Penway's comment up above, it looks like he's supporting your alternate wording there. So, do you want to go ahead with this without Elliot's I talked confirmation? Talked to uh, Elliot on this yesterday, and uh, I agree that this reversion and, and the, the text that is in green is fine. So Elliot this asked me new, to look at this. This new text is correct. Let me look. Through. Agree with this yes. text. Yes, me too. Talk to Elliot about it. It's the same problem: multi chassis or multi line card, uh, or multi uh, or stacked stacked routers all have an issue. Okay, so what do we wind up with at the end? We wind up with. Let's look at it here. A multitask router right provides a management point that connects to the verifier. Yeah. 
Yeah. I'm okay with it now. Okay. Do you want to say multi chassis or multi line card router? Does that improve it at all? Because it's a. Uh... Both are, are options. I don't know if we need to disambiguate the fact that, that we need to have multi line card support or if that's explicit when you have multi chassis. Multi chassis is certainly the more um, difficult, one. Uh, the more difficult scenario um, because there are no out of band connections. Um, but I know there are multi. Uh, what was it? There are line card chassis that act as if they're multi chassis because each line card is essentially standalone. But not right. everyone, not everyone has that level of um, disconnection. I don't know if that's the right word. Uh, uh, autonomy, I guess, maybe is the right word between the line cards. Some are line cards are very integrated, right? They, they, they don't. You're probably thinking of isolation. Yeah. yeah, in the end, it's a yeah. harder problem. The reason that multi line card still matters is that the, the signing from a TPM uh, isn't going to matter if it's multi line card or multi chassis. The trusted thing is still the, the TPM. So I'm fine with the current text. I don't know if it's just people understand it's also multi line card, but it's. Uh, you know, I have no problem including it or multi line card. It just makes sure people don't get confused. Let, let's 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 go forward like this, and and let's say if we get if we get some reviewers who are not among this group, who then say, well, does this apply to multi to to line card scenarios? Then we'll come back and assume that that we need to be explicit. Does that seem like a reasonable approach? Because I think that any one of us that read it read it again, we're going to go, well, of course we know what we mean, right? Um, and so that's where I'm, I just kind of, I, I kind of want to avoid, I, I, sometimes you don't need to hit people over the head, but sometimes you do, I guess. Okay, so this was the one, Thomas, that you asked Kathleen to look at, and Dave um, reviewed it again yesterday. Yeah, I did a pass that uh, tried to combine the uh, Parts of the old text that we liked and the parts of Kathleen's text that we didn't dislike. That's my attempt in the green down there. Because okay, we said the old text had some problems. Kathleen's text, we believed, had some problems. And so I tried to combine the best. And the, the problems we have with Kathleen's checks is it seemed to repeat itself. Well, there's a couple different things. If you, uh, yeah. if you look in Kathleen's, um, you can see it... Um, that it has a advanced protocol includes right so it elevated yeah. the should to, or it elevated the sometimes to a must and then it repeated a couple things like uh you know between the first list and red 996 and the bullets are repeated um uh, i think were the main ones the, the main technical change was the elevation of a sometimes to a must mm -hmm. which we mm -hmm. disagree with Okay, so you have must support end-to-end -end integrity protection and Yeah, so that's protection. roughly what was in our old text, except for uh, with one of Kathleen's phrases about, uh, uh, I forget what the change is between the new green and the old, old red. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to suggest, because this is, these are commits and they're undoable, Yep. Um, I'm going to suggest we we commit your suggestion because then we're going to see your suggestion against the old text true, rather true. than against Kathleen's text. And I think that's what we kind of. Um... It's fine with me if other people are okay with that. I'm okay. Okay, so now we see that. This needs to has become a must. Right, that was Kathleen's change. Yep. Yes. Um, and then we've basically expanded this sentence out into point form. Yeah. So she had okay. changed the word in uh, Red 997. You see, she changed the word protections into properties. Right. That was a Kathleen change. 
and then she had uh, changed the for example sentence into an including bullet list. Including bullet list, yeah. I'm perfectly and, good with that. Right. And you can see in the old text, it had some uh, redundancy, like it had both confidentiality and privacy protection in red. Mm -hmm. And uh, that is now just end-to-end uh, -end encryption, which was Kathleen's term. Right. And things like uh, integrity is the one that we said was problematic in the old text because it duplicates line 995, where it talks about integrity protection. And 996 has an also, right? So it's an integrity and also integrity. So that's not in the bulleted list. Right. Okay. And Kayleen, uh, uh, Kathleen did add fine-grained access controls and logging in line with current threat models and zero-trust architectures. Those are Kathleen's bullets. Any objections to this text? Mm, none, but uh, the zero trust architecture has no reference. So maybe, I don't know. That is true. I... Um, there is some zero trust reference now in the reference interaction model, but that's implicit. You can also do it explicit here, whatever you like. Oh, sorry, that. sorry. Zero trust architecture has no reference for it. There's no reference yeah. for this, is what you're saying. Yep. <clears throat> You're saying, but Hank was saying it's used somewhere else and then with um, a reference? We can we can look at this. Uh, it's it's oh. about zero knowledge and zero trust is implicit, therefore, um, but we... I, we, we I guess my preference would be to just say and logging period and delete everything from inline to the end. I agree. Ah, okay. Yeah, also the other way around, of course. Uh, we can just remove text that requires reference. I thought it was also about reference, not about text. Sorry. So you would remove all of this? Yeah, it, it, and the inline. Yes. And I would add uh, uh, auditing to that. But... So, yeah, and, and sure. actually, okay. so, so, so this was actually, right, all of these were blah, 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 in line with the current <laughs> threat model. So that actually was a new line because all of this was a blah, blah, blah in line with that other stuff. Okay. I see your point. Kathleen's text did not have it that way, but I understand how you can read it that way. And yeah, I, I think it's still fine to remove it, but. You still think it's fine to remove it. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, the other bullet, I, okay, I, so we I said, um, yeah, I was, saying, I was gonna say, go ahead and add auditing. Um, the other bullet that Kathleen had that I omitted, and I wanted to call that out in case you want to add back in, was she added authorization back in there. The reason that I removed authorization is because I think the whole point of attestation itself is a type of, um, of type of authorization. And so the fact that it's being used for, um, for uh, attestation is already um, authorization and the authorization didn't need to be in the often also needs to support because it's kind of the whole point of it is to do an authorization check and which is what, anyway, that was my rationale for why I deleted that bullet. So. So, so was there? There was also another bullet that someone suggested we had to add. I just auditing. missed it. While we... Auditing. So that's what you have in mind. Yeah, because this is already the often case, right? This is not a mandatory list. This is a uh, things that it probably does or might be in a scenario or whatever. So, but yeah. So, Dave, your rationale for not including authorization is because th that's a that's an aspect of what a a relying an application specific relying party would apply, and it doesn't apply during attestation. So, uh, I'll repeat my rationale, but if you want it in there, you can put it back in there. I'm just explaining why I. No. Out as a proposal. No. Um, this list is in the list of often also, so it's not the mandatory list. The mandatory list is the is the first one, which is integrity replay at integrity protection and replay prevention. Right, those are the two mandatory things that every conveyance protocol has to do that, or it's just not going to work for uh, for um, uh, sorry, a conveyance mechanism um, or a solution. It won't work for a remote uh, attestation. The authorization 
is a, a decision that you make about a particular action, right? You're either authorized to do that action or you're not authorized to do that action. I couldn't think of anything that that applied to other than whatever it was that you were trying to use attestation for in order to make that decision. And if you're trying to use attestation to make that decision, it's not in the also list. It's part of the inherent mandatory list. And so I didn't have a bullet on it. So it's not it's not that it's not that we're not going to use attestation for authorization. Right. It's that the it's authorization not conveyance protocol doesn't need to be uh, probably doesn't need to be authorized in the process of authorization authorizing the remote the, for the remote attestation. So correct. At least I, unless you guys can think of a reason that it does need to be, I could not think of a reason. Uh, I, I was going in the direction of authentication doesn't belong here because it belongs above. I, I can't imagine um, I, not authenticating your endorser or not authenticating your attester. It, can't you use, because if you think of like an EPID style um, attestation, right? I know that the thing is good. I don't know which one it is, but I know it's one of the thousand. Yeah, I would call that a group authentication, but yeah. Yeah, right, but 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 the point is that 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 you you may be looking at the conveyance protocol. You may the the attestation, the evidence may be signed by something that you know, and that authenticates it. But that the the right to send the evidence would itself is the point is that do you need to authenticate to be allowed to send the evidence? So I I was erring on the side of minimal change. You can see. Yeah. Red nine on a seven was also in the uh, in many use cases. You can see additional means of authentication, where authentication was not in the previous part. And so I erred on the side of uh, there was a good reason for it before. It seems right to me, so I didn't change it when I did the merge between the two. Anyway, you know, if there's additional things that somebody discovers they need in a particular use case, they obviously can add it. I, I think that that the point is that that if someone is looking at conveyance protocols, they need to ask these questions right. uh, here. And if there's other questions they have to ask, fine. But if it fails these questions, then you probably should be saying, am I doing, am I in the right place? Yep. Okay. So DNS, yep. DNS would not work well as a conveyance protocol based upon this criteria, right? For instance. <clears throat> Right. For instance, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So, uh, and is it the case that replay attack prote protection is enlisted in both? Yes. It's only, it's only in the mandatory part. Yeah. It's in mandatory. It's not in the additional. Uh, okay. I removed. Okay. Yeah, they're supposed to be a disjoint, meaning the, a list of musts and a list of shoulds. Yeah. Uh, Conceptually, anyway. Yeah. I'm looking at Okay, I'm going to commit this now. Okay, I'm going to merge uh, this. Let, let me, uh, I'm going to try to remove my uh, change request, meaning my request changes, um, so that it looks clean. Um, now that you've merged the uh, suggestion here, uh, re request review. Okay, yeah, now you can. Go ahead. Yeah, it says I have to resolve probably that line at the bottom again. Mm. Yep. Blank line at the bottom. Excuse me, writing writing software involved keyboards. Okay, so uh, this one we're leaving open. Maybe I want to. Yeah, I don't know if you want to go through it now, or other if you wanted to cover some low hanging fruit. The other option is to cover some of the uh, issues that have wording in the issue. Um, yeah, let's go back to the issue. Just I just so, uh, like uh, one oh nine looks like it would be relatively low hanging for issue one oh nine. If you wanted to hit one or two simple ones. Yeah, that's what I want to do. I just want to mark this as uh, that okay. sounds like a good mark way to mark it. Okay. Um, and 
the other one, sorry, the other pull request, Lawrence's evidence. I don't think endorsed. the one changed, right? I think it's still sitting there waiting for action, if I remember right. Okay, so issues. So I'm going to propose 109 looks like it's simple. I haven't read it all, but it looks like it's so short, and it's just to change this words to these words. I'd have to see it in line in the pull request. But it's so simple, it seems like we ought to be able to get through it in five minutes or less. Yeah, I, th I think you're right. Well, let's freaking generate a quick pull request because it's just changing half of a sentence. Uh, solely on the so. So the example changes, it removes verifier. And I, I think it's arbitrary how we choose examples here, but is that a reason why we are now exchanging verifier with a tester? I, I, I can't come into this until I actually see the pull request. I'm just, ah, okay. So I, don't, I don't know. It sounds like, Michael, you're creating the pull request. It sounds like. I'm trying to do this, yeah. e.g. the verifier for evidence. <clears throat> Solely <throat> on the remote. Remote attestation protocol initiator. E.g. the verif. E.g. the relying party. Or evidence or attestation or attestation results. We seem to have um, slot. I, I, I'm looking at the actual paragraph on my own screen, the original paragraph. I yeah. suspect that, uh, see, is Thomas on the call? Uh, since we have more than one Thomas, assuming it's Thomas Wasati, yeah. I suspect yeah. that uh, the original paragraph was right and the change is wrong, but I want to see the new phrasing. Uh, I can I, I the the context. It seems to be implicit. There's a comment, implicit timekeeping using nonces. As it says, if I'm looking at the right paragraph, a second approach places the onus of timekeeping, and that, that's what goes before the dot, dot, dot. Yeah. Uh, and that's this is the, right, this is the, this is the one using nonces. So the nonce approach places the onus of timekeeping solely on the appraising entity, e.g. the verifying party. So this is saying um, you that the uh, supplying entity, meaning whoever is supplying the evidence or supplying the attestation result, the verifier or the relying party, does not need a clock at all, even a relative clock necessarily, in the nonce example. Uh, and the protocol initiator, since we don't make any comments about the protocol, the protocol could be initiated from either direction. Right. So like in the uh, Yang mechanism that's um, initiated by the, uh, let's say, the uh, verifier, for example, right, and not by, and it's not initiated by the relying party or the attester. So the original paragraph was trying to be agnostic as a conveyance protocol because different conveyance protocols are initiated by either end. So we can't say which one is the initiator. Right, so the one who generates the nonce is the guy that... Yeah, generating uh, the nonce may not be done by whoever initiates the program. Right, okay. And I don't yeah, know how... The, the nonce generator is a good way to phrase it, yeah. I don't know how the sentence... In the, with the change in the beginning, it, it ends with a comma and goes on. And I don't know if, if, it, if it still ends with a comma and goes on. So... Thomas, can you say what you thought was wrong on the previous text? I don't have the context here. I just, I just see okay. the PR. So, so, at least you're, so let, right, let me take... We can wait for Michael to push it then if that makes it easier for you. I'm, I remember reading this and reading it twice and thinking after reading it twice that it was okay. 
<laughs> but you had to read it twice. Yeah. So maybe that's a better wording. So. Hmm. What problem are we solving? I, I don't understand what problem is solved. I, I, that's what I was asking Thomas is what's the problem in the original text? Yeah. I, well, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> sure. You know, yeah. okay, so one, um, of the, one of the things is always make a pull request rather than an issue because then we can see the, you can put the, some text around the whole thing. Okay, so this is as far as I got. I think this is correct. Um, I'm sorry that the, I guess I've reformatted some things that I didn't need to. Uh, so I might be able to undo that. Mm, no, uh, the only difference you could do is you can combine the last two lines, but that wouldn't make it any more readable. So it's fine as you have it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So now you can see the stuff in context, and I'm saying I don't think it's correct to use protocol initiator as a term. Um, so now you can read the old nonce generator instead. Might not be a nonce though. I like to say protocol initiator because there's lots of things that can initiate. Right. So the point here is that the nonce generator and the appraising entity. Uh, I was going to say something that I don't think is true, so um, I need to look at a diagram because I was going to say that the repressing entity and the nonce generator are the same entity, and I think that's actually false because there's a nonce relayed at one point in one of the examples. The generation of nonce is, of course, initiator, but nonces can be come from anywhere, as we know, if the contentious uh, fourth example. So it might not be the best indicator where this actually comes from was generated. I think who wants, who, who requests information and where it is conveyed to, that is interesting. Okay, um, I, I, I'm convinced that uh, what I was going to say is in fact wrong, because example four is a good example. Um, and that's, I, I don't have a better suggestion than the red text right now. So if somebody else has a other amendment, please propose. What's wrong with the green text? The green text? I think it's wrong. Sure. Because because in many conveyance protocols, right, the protocol initiator is the attester. And the whole point is that there's no burden on the attester of having a clock in the first place. Because the attester doesn't generate any nonces. It only consumes nonces and repeats them back. So it doesn't need a clock. And so it's the protocol initiator. And it is not having any onus of timekeeping. So that's what I mean by the green text is wrong. So I claim that the red text is correct, even if you have to read it twice. And so if you have an amendment that makes you not have to read it twice, feel free. But the green text, I think the protocol initiator is the, is definitely wrong. Yeah, I agree. I, 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 I editing it, I was like, wait, what? We seem to be removing something here that was important. Um, it, it is true that uh, anybody that appraises information at least in the cases that uh, we walk through in the document, the, the two that use nonces um, do require a clock on the appraising entity. And it requires a clock on the relying party and the verifier. All right, I, I see what you're saying. You're, you're saying the appraising entity might have to go to the, the remote test and protocol initiator. So it could be a two step process that is hidden in the first statement. Uh, yeah, there's at least two errors in the green text that I can find. Yep. So I, I'm seeing that it's true in this case, but it doesn't always have to be true. So if we don't exclude the appraising entity from doing extra stuff, then, then I see we're okay. All right, I'm good. Oh, Ned, you had to read it twice. Do you have anything that you had to read it twice on that you think might be an improvement? Uh, the It was the recognizing that both the verifier and the relying party are appraising entities. Gotcha. Find appraising entity separately, which maybe is okay, but. Okay, how about this then? Um, in the red text, what if uh, EG was IE? That's fine, yeah. I don't know that we define any other appraising entities other than the verifier and the relying party, so. Yeah, I don't need that. I think. I think it's 
Okay. Okay. So, um, um, so I want to undo this text and I want to change the EG to be IE. That's what I just heard. Yep. Yes. So that's what we want in the end. Is it right to have a comma after IE? Uh, yes, Chicago <laughs> Manual like e says you must put a comma after IE. Yeah. Okay, I just wasn't sure. I knew that was true for EG, but I wasn't. I suddenly it had doubt whether it was true for IE or not. No, in Chicago, there has it's, it's the same for both. You have to have a comma after both. Okay. Push pushed it three times. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Okay, so that's closed, and so that's one oh nine. That closed one oh nine. It didn't close it. It's supposed to close it. So I guess that didn't close. It said close issue one oh nine. <laughs> Say close ish, close one oh nine. You got another magic uh, incantation. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I opened this. Um, one fourteen is another one of uh, Thomas has copied from Kathleen's that might be easy. To open, maybe, maybe not. Uh, well, I haven't read it yet, so I don't know, but it's uh, at least short. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's easy, but it's a short. So. I think it's a good plan, a strategy to address most of Kathleen's comments before submission, because then yeah. again, we then have... she will come back and said, "Well, you haven't addressed any of my comments yet." So, uh, sorry, no, it. no, I've never done this. <laughs> <laughs> An execution environment may not, by default, Okay, I understand what it is intending to say. Okay, let's see what she says. Okay, maybe she's just confused. I think I under, I didn't write this text, but I understand what it's trying to say. Because this is in the two types of environments, right? It says there's a testing and target environments. And it just starts off talking about execution environments, right? And she's saying um, that you can't just assume that you can do it, but once you can do it, then you're called in a testing environment is the intent, right? And so it says, well, an, arb you know, an arbitrary one, it's not necessarily capable of you know, measuring something else. But things that are, are called in testing environments. Those are the ones that are specifically designed to do the measuring, right? That's the intent of that text, as I understand it. And she finds the wording confusing, and maybe there's a clearer way to say that. She offers, hey, maybe we can uh, call on that. Yeah, she doesn't give specific text, and so... The, yeah. Do people agree that my interpretation is what was intended? I don't know. Yeah, I know. think that you're right. So let's try this one line. No, that's not what I want. Um, no. Okay. I keep pacing. I think the intent is to something because it's talking about may not by a default. I right? would say um, execution environments that are capable of claims collection are called a testing entire environments or something like that. Sorry, my problem is that the little thing that says this window is 
is uh, being shared is right on top of my location bar. So I'm finding it really difficult to actually paste into it. So are you working on a pull request or what? I, the... I just, I just, yeah, I just did okay. a pull request. There we go. Okay. Um, I just, I couldn't paste it in because the stupid, the, the URL, because of the, uh, this window is. So this is 127. All right. I'm going to flip to that and maybe I'll. Yeah, you should be sharing it. it. Should be yeah, sharing I'll suggest a wording into here to see if you like it better or worse. So. Okay. Um, I, I'm only changing the second line, so not, not the one that you changed. Because um, so she commented that she had a hard time understanding the second sentence in particular. So, um, okay. I thought about saying changing instead of arbitrary to trusted, but then I thought that was too specific. I trusted what, why Trust what? execution environments may not by default be capable of claims collection well and that's not i think the point we, and we no, talked about the point yeah who okay. trusted execution environments embedded secure elements in bios from and you and this is this is this is with text was this text refined by you right this now this one point? No, yeah, I, I, I changed this just now. I just proposed no, this. No, no, I mean, I mean the original one. The, an execution environment may not by default be capable of claims collection. Did I, I didn't write this. I, didn't, I write didn't write this. I think I wrote it. Yeah, okay. I think, yes. I think so, too. So, Ned, is this still capturing the initial intent? Sorry for my good memory. Okay, refresh. <laughs> refresh, uh, Michael. Uh, I just don't know what an arbitrary execution environment is yeah i don't know what it is <laughs> it's <laughs> <arbitrary>. <laughs> yeah, if you just pick what yeah. the point is if you just pick some execution environment it it might not work yeah but it's uh, n so arbitrary is overly specific for something you just pick i don't know what the problem initially was so I, I don't i don't know that there was a problem in that sentence so so maybe that was not the right fix well yeah. if we picked on the second sentence at least that's what she said in her comment is uh how did she word it it was um uh i can what is it is it the testing environment is a place to use another processes were not necessarily designed with claims in mind if you can help to explain the testing environment better oh sorry she says the following text is a little confusing, in particular, the last sentence. And so then she quotes two sentences. And so when she says it's a little confusing, in particular, the last sentence. Right. Okay. I figured she was picking on the one that I was proposing it. some change. Yeah. So execution environments that are designed to be capable of claims collection are referred to this in the document as a testing environments. I'm happy with that. And so we won't, and this are, and you don't like my arbitrary change. Uh, it's, not... <laughs> it's an arbitrary change. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would say reject the 380 and accept 382. Okay. Um, so, well, there's a uh, ending quote, quote, quote that's not supposed to be there in my comment. Yeah, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna grab your thing and I'm going to I'm going to put it into the the thing and then I'll refresh it and then it will be just what you proposed. Okay. If gotcha. I remove mine, I think that it will there'll be no change and then it the the thing may disappear. No, I think it was well the the three ticks was part of the uh, you know make a suggestion and somehow it got included in there instead of being marked as the end of the change suggestion. It's weird. I'm saying that if I remove yeah, I my know. change, then there'll be no change in the git change and that there'll be no, the, the thing may disappear as a <laughs> our edit. That's all I'm saying. So. <laughs> yeah, I get you. X, X, Q, I lost a little bit of track of where we are right now. I like Dave's uh, uh, rewording, yeah. and that would solve a problem probably. I don't know. So 
that's your wording, Dave. Yeah. Now- yeah, that looks fine to me. I mean, you're, you're, you're. I agree that you have uh, correctly put that into the pull request. The next one of Kathleen's is 115. Also a very short uh, issue. I don't know. 115 is the name. Oh, yeah, we want to make sure 114 can be closed. Or uh, 114 is closed. And is, what did you say, 115? 115 is another one of Kathleen's. Uh, I'm just going through the ones that Thomas had filed from Kathleen's review. So. OK, so part so two, but what is this? Tricky. Yeah, where does this that go? Was... Kathleen's review. I don't know what Rowley is, so what is Rowley? I got to look at the RFC. Rowley is a, Rowley is a Atom feed a nine. subscription to software identities. Uh, the scope of SCAP 2.0. SCAP is the security content automation protocol as advocated by the US government. So um, Rowley is literally an Atom role and it has some filters to it and there are some new interaction qualities to it, but it is not a full-fledged a protocol for remote station, you can create is it just an yeah. option as a conveyance protocol. Is that what this is about? Yes, this is a conveyance protocol for software identities today. And I therefore, the search in there, the word attest doesn't appear anywhere in the RFC. No, there is no attestation or okay. uh, anything like it in okay. the role conveyance for today, but it could be molded in. I think that is the suggestion here implicitly. But we don't have other examples, right? She said, list that as an option. We do. We do. We have HTTPS, COAP, 802.1x, OPC, okay. UA. COAP co uh, would uh, be the most general thing, but it is COAP is a very tricky answer here because not a final solution, so it's not an explicit solution. It's, it's a solution for a solution. So, hmm. um, Okay, gotcha. So, Michael, you're saying, so right now there's a section on the uh, a tester talking to a relying party for resource access, meaning um, it's not the thing that conveys, you know, um, it's not talking about attestation. It's just saying you can have something that is a use case for adding in, att uh, adding in um, uh, attestation, right, to access some resource or something. And that's where that list came from that you mentioned, HTTP, co-app, uh, OPC UA, and so on is that list. And if you're saying, you could add that one. Sure. If that's what she wants, I'm fine with that. We still have to make it fit. So Roly is a building block that could be the basis for another remote yeah. attestation can, protocol. Hey, can you uh, go into the built out HTML view of the actual document? Uh, yeah. So uh, let me see just a second here. Uh, and um, I have that in the right place. I just don't have, it won't format because it wants to. And Thomas, there was no more context. This was the whole thing on this topic. There wasn't anything else around this that was uh, clarified. Uh, was was oh, okay, didn't realize that. Like uh, five minutes ago. Okay. I will go as if I can find her email and look myself, but I'll be typing it out. Oh, yeah. So it, her email's right here. Uh, but, but, there's but, the but, really but. point. I don't know if there's a specific section number, is what I'm looking for that she puts in. Yeah, here. section but, nine. Yeah. So that's the comment there. Awesome. And um, okay. So let's look at. The built out document, which one is section nine? I'm just going to grab the built up document and I and I can show it to you. Uh, yeah. There we go. Boom, boom. And section nine. Uh, and coding formats. OK, yeah, it can be any new in this diagram. The protocol between them can be any new or existing protocol. HP. Yeah, so yeah, that right. So in the EG. HTTPS, COEPS, H2NX, OPC UA, et cetera. 
And then the separate yeah. last sentence, common formats include JWTs, CWTs, and X-1209 certificates. I don't know which one of those two is she referring to. Is that I think that it should go like right here. Because it's a protocol, not a format. Is that right? I believe it is. Okay. And I, I thought I got that. Because it's called right place. Uh, sorry. I'm yeah, but Roly would not be used between a test and a relying party. Probably uh, Roly would be used between a test and a verifier. Right? Um, I, I don't know why the tester would give all its software inventory to a relying party. I have no use for that. It, um, okay, yes, I get your point. Uh, because your point, Hank, is that you'd give it to something that then uh, summarizes it and says, yes, you're good, and the relying party would use the yes, you're good. Yeah, but that is yeah. probably the yes, you're good is the result, and that is a very fast task. Um, Actually, I can think of an example, um, which is think of the background check model, right? Where the evidence gets conveyed to the relying party, the relying party just treats it as opaque and ships off to a verifier. So it has, still has to be conveyed across the protocol between the attester and the ah, okay. party. Yeah, but then the then the, the box here, the, the figure eight is misleading, but it's, it's, it seems to no, be a consumer of the information here. Is, because it says evaluate request, you know, and it doesn't do that. It is relaying it, so it's confusing a figure then at the end. Um, well, personally, I don't think so, but I I, I think the what Michael shows is fine with me. In other words, where you've inserted it. Yeah, why is this actually uh, the, only... the, the, the figure talks about a relationship to which remote attestation is desired to be added. Right, this is showing without attestation, it looks like this. Oh, so sorry. And then it's Thank saying, you. and then you can add it by doing X, Y, or Z or whatever. But this is like the before picture, not the after picture. To which, yeah, uh, reading is solving problems. I'm so sorry, Dave. Uh, <laughs> yes. So I, okay. I'm fine with the way that Michael shows it with Roly being in that list of the EGs there. Assuming okay. that Roly is a protocol, which I can't vote for myself. But if it's a protocol and not just a format, then yes. Roly is a protocol, yes. Okay. It's an Atom feed. The Atom protocol okay. is okay. used. All right. All right, then that looks, that looks good to me. Did you... Just manually edit that in, or do you have a pull request, Michael? I have a pull request. Here okay. we go. Files changed. Cool. Yep. Looks great. I approve. And sorry for the misconception of figure, uh, whatever it was. <laughs> it's, it's actually excellent. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was one more on Kathleen's list. So I think we're down to only one issue from Kathleen. Uh, the top one, 116. Uh, and then which section was this? Presumably we got a section called privacy considerations. Yeah, we do. Okay, that's the one. Uh, I was trying to read that. Oh, uh, <laughs> sorry. I'm trying to get to the privacy considerations here. So we have <laughs> privacy considerations. Oh, so, yeah. Remote attestation also provides a way to profile systems as well as even the attestation go higher in the stack. So we really need some real text here. I think here. her first yeah. bullet is easy to address in the first sentence. It's, it's, it's profile systems as well as the user behind that system. All right, the first sentence in the privacy considerations um, says the conveyance of evidence and resulting attestation results reveal a great deal of information about the internal state of a device, right? And so we could say something like about the internal state of a device, as well as potentially about the user running on that device, user, you know, the uh, users using that device, for example. Yeah. No, no, no. I would say the, the, uh, as well as the user that influences the device or something, because you're not di directly tracking the user, yeah. 
you're using it, uh, if you use installed software and you then you run oh. remote station, you would know that at it, some point. It, if the uh, device is a uh, a Lost, a, oh, yeah. a phone, a pacemaker, then you're actually profiling information about the user too, because the device is tightly associated with the user, right. like it's worn. I I I lost the audio part way through there. Oh. We're just so talking I about the very you. first sentence, Michael, about the one that says about the internal yes. state of the device, and as well as the user, that. and yeah. as well uh, as potentially any users that that device is associated with. Yeah, no, 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 sorry, sorry, but this is not a remote intercession problem. So if the if you, if my my pacemaker is associated with me, but probably it has an address that is relatively stable because it has to be accessed. So the association of address to me is the problem, not the remote intercession. Yeah, so I think your else. point, Hank, was about what application you may have installed. So for example, if I attest that your phone has a uh, a uh, glucose tracker application on it. Right, I can identify information about the user. Right, <clears throat> they have you know diabetes or something. Right, and then I can narrow down which user it is. Sorry, I, I did see. This wrong. Okay, yeah, um, I think the choice <clears throat> might might have an impact on this. Okay, but it's the, I think it's the case that that the target environment is the is where your is where all of these use case considerations play, and they're already they already have whatever their privacy implications are. <clears throat> but what, what attestation is doing is providing greater assurance that the target environment is doing what it is doing. And so if it's authenticating the user because it's a tight binding between the user and the device, it's authenticating that, that uh, you know, it's, it, it's improving the assurance that that is the case. So I just but got I to notice that it's the top of the hour. And is there anybody that wants to take a shot at, at some pull request on this one? Or what do we think the next step is? I think we need better text proposals here, and I don't know who is creating them. I cannot create this this iteration, so. Um... So, uh, um, without asking you to volunteer, Michael, do you have any opinion on? I have. I have. I have yeah, I, yeah, me. I that my swearing was me uh, pushing my proposal on master rather than a branch and just <laughs> doing it going like damn I it missed a command mm -hmm. um, so okay right. so um, do you understand her points and have any idea of what you think uh, we should I, do I understand point? your point about her point that okay. you said <laughs> um, and that might get us a little bit the, the first point so I think you said um, in many cases is uh, uh, I mean, I don't want to keep device as well as users associated with it. Okay, so I suggest we come back to this, yeah. but um, um, the, the deadline is the, the, Sunday, next the Tuesday, deadline Monday. is uh, next week, Monday, yeah, next yeah. week, Monday, midnight. So, so uh, yeah. just a, a, a quick Sorry. comment on the privacy. I mean, maybe look at the what what's in eat. I mean, I thought I I thought that was actually okay, but I don't okay. Know can can you can you mind. pull some text out that will help us here? Because uh, that would be so, yeah. okay. Uh, so there is a pull request here one sixteen, um, and I uh, no yeah not the pull request number, but. Well, the point is that we can put the text go where anywhere. Is the issue number, not the pull request number. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. It's the it's the pull request is anyway. It's pointed there. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. Um, the pull request is 129. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how much text that you, you need there, and I haven't tracked the, this whole discussion. So um, I'll, I'll I'll take a look at it the next day or two and and see what I can All do. Right. Thanks. Okay. So maybe uh, Kathleen will 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 respond in there. So basically, it's I, I I think that Dave's comment addresses point one, and we just need to probably a half a sentence for each one of these other things. Um, I understand them. I don't know that I understand them enough to suggest text on those three. I only said the sure the first one. Enough. I do. I just don't know what to, to say about them in okay. the privacy gotcha. considerations. Right. I see her point, but I don't know what to to text. To. Okay. So, so Friday we're Friday we're gonna we're gonna talk again. And then we're gonna we're gonna post your document. That's good. Okay. Um, Wonderful. We, we are gonna, so, so, sorry. No, 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 no. Sorry, Michael. Michael, what? we we have to what? post before. Uh, we have to post on twelve. 
that is that is Sunday next week. So we have a little bit of time to compose something. We have we have till the end of this week, plus yeah. this weekend. But probably um, all of us have other documents we have to race yeah. to the deadline. Yep. So I, I would propose that we post whatever we got after the meeting on Friday. Hear that? Okay. Yeah. If, if everybody's fine with this, yes. No matter how imperfect it is. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Okay. Fine. All right. Sounds good. I'll see you guys okay. on Friday. Bye -bye. Friday. Bye-bye.